I'm going to tackle in terms of the bolts and nuts over here. Uh, if you were to invest, what should you get into? And then a little bit of knowledge with regards to each of the uh, asset classes and the instruments involved. Uh, we have quite a fair bit to get through. My colleagues have been very diligent. We came up with uh, slides for 40 minutes, but I think we have maybe 20, 25. Now, here we go. Now, when we first came here, I think we wanted to set the stage here in terms of what we're talking about because it's been used interchangeably. Uh, you should invest in ETF bonds and equities and etc. Just to differentiate that, right? If you look at this chart over here, on the x-axis, we're talking about the returns. On the y, we have volatility. And the returns typically associated with, with each of these asset classes, those will be in the blue bubble. When we talk about ETFs, it is merely an instrument, all right, that helps to wrap, if you call it, I mean, we typically call it a wrapper because it makes it easier to access those asset classes. So just bear that in mind. If you forget a lot of stuff, do remember this, which is why we want to put this up as the first slide. All right, the asset class and an instrument, you know, don't, don't, don't get it mixed up. Now, maybe I step back a little. When we first got an invite to talk about my money, uh, my money at campus, it did have a, a bit of a ring to me um, as I was thinking about whether to participate or not. And then finally it dawned on me, what's so special about this uh, uh, labeling my money? My wife says to me, hey, my money is my money. Your money is also my money. So I thought it was very relevant to have that. I think David did talk about choosing a wife and, and, and being, you know, paying dividends and all that. This is the other part of it. All right, just be careful. Now, in terms of um, talking about stocks, I wanted to walk through with you because um, we have built up quite a fair bit of resource on our website. Um, by talking through this in the next 20 minutes or so, you'll probably forget about it, but I thought it is more important to showcase where to find all these tools so that when you get back after the prezzo, you know where to find them and where to find some of these tools that you, you can use. Do we have the laptop for that? Check, I come over here. Yes. Now, while they are bringing up the website, when you talk about stock, typically there's two sorts of um, analysis that you go to. One is the fundamental, where you look at the financial statements and etc. in order to make a decision. Typically, the type of investors that look into this sort of information, fundamental in nature, right? Your Warren Buffett, so on and so forth, uh, value-driven and etc. The other one is obviously technical analysis, a much shorter time horizon. They look at the movements, price movements, the momentum, in order to come to a, a view whether the price is going to continue and etc. Now, what I wanted to highlight to you, where to find a resource that we have built up over the years to help us and investors to find information. This is more geared towards the fundamental side of things. First, come to the website sgx.com, head over to my gateway, all right, and investor roadmap. Better to teach a person how to fish than to give them a fish. So what we have over here is to think you through, as you can tell from there, introduction, understanding basics, getting started, helpful tools, and more resources. This will basically map up a journey for a Complete beginner opening accounts. How should you go about it? What documentation do you require? As basic as that, all the way to doing some analysis, financial statements. Just walk you through some of this. Introduction, reasons to invest, setting your goals. Good to have a roadmap before you start the journey, just like you fire up your GPS before you drive. Now, when you talk about understanding the basics, 
types of investment products, stock analysis. This is what I was talking about earlier on. <coughs> Lastly, you have fundamental and technical analysis. So you can delve into some of these topics just to get a better understanding on that. Now, if you want to get started, I was very happy to see earlier on the survey results. You guys want to start now. And your choice of instruments that were listed out there was equities and stocks. Yes, I'm back in business. And of course, ETF, which I will talk about later on, although it ranked pretty low. But don't forget about that because as a first stop, that instrument class is quite a useful one. All right, I will share on that. So over here, your CDP account, you first need to have a CDP, a CDP account, just like your bank account. You want to save money, you need to have an account. This is for your stocks. And then you need to have a trading account, which will go to a broker. Brokers will love to see you guys. Now, more importantly, I want to talk about, you click into each of these boxes, it will give you, you know, more information beyond, behind that. Use helpful tools. This is the one I want you to focus on. We have a guide for you, but stock facts. Something that we are very happy to, to build this and provide this for free. If there is a particular stock that you want to look at, you want to find out the financial information, recent announcement, share price, let's take SIA. All right, you search for that, pops up. They have a couple of, let's just pick and see what shows up over here. First, you have the share price chart, which is then you can pick, you know, Monday, one month, just to see how is the movement. These are all the announcements over here and some basic ratios. Overview of the company, the valuation, financials, dividend, history, and ownership, together with a description of what it does. So this is meant to be a very simple snapshot for you to understand whichever companies you're looking at. You receive information from the press, talking about certain company, you want to know more. Let this be your first stop in terms of picking up useful information at a glance. So come to sgx.com, go to my gateway tab, and then stop fact. That navigation should help you. Now, the other interesting item that we have done over here, now, we call this stock facts, it's a screener. Now, basically what this little tool here helps you to do is, for those of you who are familiar with some of the uh, tools, Bloomberg, Thomson Reuters, and etc., we've taken some of the features over there in terms of a screener and provided to the average retail investors over here. And this is pro obviously provided free. You, for instance, you want to look for companies that are sizable from a market cap standpoint. You want to look for companies that are cheap. I'm a cheapskate. I love to buy cheap stuff. Anything more than a PE of 10, I like the price. Right? PE is typically used as a gauge to see how expensive or how cheap it is. And there are pros and cons of using these particular metrics. I won't go into that in this particular forum, but generally it's been uh, used as a, uh, uh, you know, one of the metrics. So you may want to have some of these criteria to help you narrow your search. That's the whole idea of this screener. We have 750 companies on the exchange. So, you look at market cap, you can pull this slider over here, right? Now, that will reduce the number count oops, of the stocks you find over here. So, if you want to invest in anything 30 million from size market cap standpoint, you start reducing because you're increasing the hurdle. Now, if you want to find something that is cheap, <coughs> the highest P is 894 times. So you are bring it all the way down to, let's say, 15. Oops. Now, that reduces it to 226. So you can play around with all these metrics. If you want to delete them, just knock it off from here. And you can replace them with the ones over here, be it financials, valuation, and etc. All right, total of five 
sort of um, metrics that you can play around with. The whole idea is to help you screen for companies. You may look, different people have got different style. My strategy, I go for cheap stuff, some may go for growth. Then they look for growth ratios, <coughs> return on equity, so on and so forth. So you can play around with the tools in order to arrive at a list, maybe 10 over companies, and then you do a little bit more work, read up more about the company, and etc. before you invest. I'm spending a little bit more time here because based on the, the uh, survey, I mean, a lot of you are interested in the equities space directly, which is why I think showing you this tool is a lot more helpful, hopefully, as you get through that process, right? So this is where it helps you <coughs> as a screener to narrow that list and come to a decision point, okay? Now I'll move back and continue with the uh, fixed income part of the Prezo, uh, which I'll go through a little bit quicker. Now, okay, equities, we've gone through that. Where to find it? Let me have a show of hands. Do you guys remember the navigation site? Let me just repeat that one more time, right? Before you forget and before I move on to fixed income. SGX.com, look for the tab, <coughs> My Gateway, and then look for uh, My Gateway, and then you have an uh, investor roadmap. So you can go through all those and you can find them over there. Now, I'll move on, all right? Fixed income. These are all the corporate retail bonds that are available in smaller denomination, right? They are in a thousand in terms of vault size. So from a retail standpoint, it is still affordable in that sense. What is a bond? What is a fixed income? Anybody, during my time when I was a student, I took a student loan. Very simple, I go shop around the banks, I find out what is the interest rate I gotta pay, I figure out what are my fees, how much I need to borrow, and how long do I need to pay them back. So I'm the borrower, the bank is extending a loan to me. Flip that around. All right, flip that around. Basically, now what you are is when you're buying a bond, you are extending, you are lending somebody money. You become the bank. All right? And all these terms about coupon, maturity, so on and so forth, it's just the mirror image of your student loan. It's exactly the same thing. You look at the terms of your student loan. I just flipped up before I came here, DBS. You have to pay a minimum $100 a month at the very least. That's, in a way, the interest uh, you know, uh, payment that you have to pay back at a regular interval. That's your coupon. Same thing. At the end of the period, you've got to repay the principal. If you, you, if you borrow 10000 you've got to repay 10000 And that's the principal amount from a bond's perspective. So next time, if you're going to the bank to borrow a student loan, don't go to them and say, I'm, I'm here for a student loan. You tell them, I'm here to issue a bond. I'm offering you an opportunity to invest in my bond. The interest rate is X, Y, Z. Tenor is this, I will repay you semi-annually. That's what you should do. I think that guy will be so impressed with you, he's gonna give you a loan immediately. Either that or you get a security guard to put you up. <laughs> so, concepts, conceptually, it's exactly the same thing. Mirror image, all right? So, minus of all that, jargons, whatever you call it, it's exactly what that, and that's what you are investing into. Now, if you're going to lend a loan to your friend, what are you going to do? Is this guy going to pay me back, right? Am I going to ping him every now and then to figure out he's still alive, he's still working, and he can still pay me, right? So these are exactly the same consideration the bank is going to put through. So they have recall, so on and so forth. The only, I wouldn't say the only difference, but some of the differences, if you were to invest in a bond, in an extend a loan to a corporate who is issuing all this, right? Now, the difference is, of course, in terms of the capital structure of the company, a company has, the first, when you start a, 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 a company, if you are going to be a restaurant owner because you, that's your aspiration, you first come out with 100,000, set up shop, then you borrow from the bank, right? 
Now, should touch wood, business not do well and etc. The banks will have the first right in terms of claim on your assets. So if they were to sell off your assets, claim all their money back first as a debt holder, then whatever balance is left, you get it back. Your 100,000 may not be 100,000 obviously. Exactly the same concept over here applied to a corporate. The first lien on, on the assets is obviously going to the bond uh, holders, which is you guys who have invested in it. And then next will be the equity guys. That means the guys who buy shares. So for those of you, I know you're very enthusiastic about buying stocks. Do know that in the event of a liquidation, when the guys goes bankrupt, you are right at the back, back end of the queue. All right? Now that's pretty much on the fixed income side of things. And then uh, over here, <coughs> okay, this is a, what I was telling you about the loan, the coupon, which is the interest rate, the tenor and all that. I won't go through that. I've already talked about it, but it's exactly the same. Just remember the example. You go to the bank, you, 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 know, you offer them a chance to invest in your bond. Liquidation, I talked about that. Rating agencies. It's basically when you lend a loan to your friend, can he pay me? Basically, here, you are going to pay off some of these rating agencies or some of these guys to do the due diligence for you. That's about it. They give you ratings. Triple A, the highest, you know, triple B, investment grade, and then anything beyond that, jump. Very simple. And those are names of the uh, typical rating agencies. <coughs> okay. Now, one thing, if you want to buy a bond, you have to learn how to read that stuff. <coughs> this will be the name of the issuer, right? The percentage here will be the coupon, and then the maturity date, and then the price. Now, one thing that you have to be aware of, the price does fluctuate <coughs> on a mark-to-market mark -market basis. But if you were to hold it to maturity, you do get your principal if the guy doesn't go bust. Simple as that. But on a mark to market, there's demand supply, there's volatility, and there's also the yield curve consideration. So we'll have that. So, fast forward. I'm going to go into ETF. Why I insist on going through ETF is because. <coughs> As a first stop for some of you, I know in the younger crowd, based on, based on the uh, younger employees and the interns that we, come, that we have coming to the firm, quite bipolar, either never invested or super savvy, right? So leverage, FX, so on and so forth. But the other group <coughs> that is suited for exchange trader fund will be the ones that have not invested. Now, what is an exchange traded fund? Think of it as a unit trust, but without the high fees um, and the active management that comes with it. In terms of structure, it is very similar to a unit trust. But basically what it does is, it tracks an index, that comprises of a basket of stocks. In this instance, we have the ST, taking the STI as an example. So, sorry, before I get into that, it is convenient because it goes through an indexing. You don't have to go into the individual stock analysis because you're buying a basket. So it's already diversified. And allow investors to get very easy access to a variety of asset classes currencies, uh, bonds, equities. And because it follows an index, an index has got a survivor bias, it only, it typically for an equity index for most exchanges, they will take the biggest stock. Anything that falls off, they replace it. So an index can live, so to speak, for a much longer period than a particular corporate or entity. Because corporate entities go through cycle, but when you pull together 30 of them and you replace those that have fallen in size, then the index can continue to go on. Right. 
Now, essentially this is what it does. With the STI index, with one unit, you actually pick up a basket of about 30 stocks. Makes it a lot easier for you to buy into the performance of the index without having to do too much homework into the individual stocks. This is where we compare a unit trust with a stock. <coughs> Diversification, both has it. Liquidity, during market hours, there's a pricing of the ETF so you can buy and sell at any point in time. Whereas for unit trust, typically uh, end of day or on a periodic basis. Active management charge higher fees because you do need a fund manager to actively look for those companies. <coughs> there's also a sales charge for unit trust. Right? So, let me just pull out all this. Oops. So basically, between a unit trust and a stock, you don't have these issues over here, but has still has the benefits of this. So, in a way, it combines the advantages of both the unit trust as well as stocks, because it trades. This one is talking about the cost. Naturally, the higher the management fees and sales charge, the lower your overall return, based on this particular example over here. Uh, it can eat into your returns by quite a fair bit. In some instances, about 10% in this particular example. Right? So, <coughs> sorry, just recovered from a bad throat, so which is why, okay. Time's up. Uh, there are a lot of ETFs that we have on the exchange, we have about 80 over, uh, from geographic, asset class, and etc. Some things to look at. Now, if you go back into the site, sgs.com, you look under products and then look for ETF. There's a whole series of resources and tools we've prepared for you guys as well. So have a look at that when you're looking for an ETF that you, I mean, should you be interested in finding more about the ETF uh, side of the, the story. Okay, with that, I'm going to hand over to Ming for the next part of it. Thank you very much.